Professor Mattingly here again for another Fantastic Beast lesson. Today's Fantastic Beast is the Basilisk. Oh my, let's look here. Here is a picture of a Basilisk. Oh my goodness. Now they are known as the King of the Serpents right there. Um, they can actually grow up to 50 feet in length. Can you imagine? That is enormous. Now, let's look here at another picture because there's something very specific I want to discuss, and that is the gaze of the basilisk. Now, they can cause either petrification, which you are rendered immobile, cannot move, or in some cases, instant death. You don't want to stare directly for a bit of a period of time in a basilisk's eyes. Instant death is not what you want to have on your schedule for the day. So you might be, just based on what I said, staring directly into the eyes of this basilisk. You'll be fine. It is a photograph. It has to be in actual live basilisk. So you'll be just fine. All right, let's look at this next picture here. Actually, oh, there we go. You know, technology. All right, here we go. Now, you can look at their teeth. They are venomous. In fact, let's go back to this picture. The venom is nearly dripping off of their teeth. Oh, my goodness gracious. Now, so how were they made? They were actually made by dark wizards. And you know what they did? They took chicken eggs and they hatched the eggs beneath the toad. Now, whoever came up with that and said, oh, let's take these chicken eggs and let's put them under a toad, you have to wonder about them, but you really don't wonder that much because they are dark wizards, so it seems to make quite a bit of sense. All right, so since we were talking about something as awful as the instant death or petrification, we are going to go to something much more joyous. We are going to make tiny little slime snakes. Oh, they're adorable. They're not real at all, but just fun to make. What we're going to do is we're going to take sodium algamate and we are going to mix it with a calcium chloride solution. Now, when I say solution, it means I took just a bit of calcium chloride and added H2O, also known as water, and it's actually soluble in water, so it dissolves and it makes a solution. All right, let me get my supplies and we will make slime snakes. All right, in the muggle world, obviously the animal that most resembles a basilisk is a snake. And I actually have one here that I wanted to introduce you to. So I have my friend here, oh, he's delightful. His name is Beauregard, you know, and he's an African ball python. Let me see if he's awake for us. Excuse me, Beauregard, are you awake? He's awake, he's awake. All right, here he is. Isn't he delightful? Now look, I want you to notice that he's going to stick his tongue out here. Now watch. Oh, there it is. There it is. Let's see it again. Oh, now I assume from some of our previous studies um, on the basilisk that you would understand why he's sticking his tongue out. Right? He's smelling. It's fascinating. So what they'll do with their tongue is they pick up molecules in the air. They take it to the back of their throat here. They have things named Jacobson organs. And it helps them to determine exactly what it is that they're smelling. Hopefully he's wishing that it would be a tasty gerbil for the day. What a delightful snack. Now listen, they are also nocturnal, which means they're active at night and they sleep during the day. If you look closely, can you see those wonderful heat pits? They use those to actually see their prey at night because any mammal who's warm-blooded is going to give off, um, with their heat pits, it's going to give off um, the energy that they can then take in and try to hunt. 
super fascinating. Look at that. These are known as scoot scales. And that is how a snake and a basilisk, for that matter, actually move around, almost like an accordion. Isn't it wonderful? Now, we did mention a tasty gerbil for a snack. Believe it or not, a snake can digest everything. Fur, bones, all of it. Mm, I'm getting hungry just discussing this right now, honestly. They can digest it all, so the process takes a rather long time. And all of it will pass all the way through them till they decide it's time to evacuate whatever they didn't need, whatever nutrients they didn't use. So then they will actually poop. Everything poops, right? But a snake often, depending on the type, will only poop about once a month. Oh, how wonderful! So, again, this is Beauregard, my African ball python. Right, so slime snakes. Here's my mixture, and I have a ball here. I will actually turn this down so you can see what I'm doing. Here we go. All right, so we're going to add our calcium chloride and water right here. We'll just add all of it. So now this sodium algamate, and believe it or not, along with that, there's some other special ingredients, including something to make one of them blue and the other a very bright pink, but there's also an extract from brown seaweed. It's a very interesting reaction when it is the calcium chloride in water. All right, let's start with pink first. We're just going to pour this in. There we go. Oh, delightful. All oh, right. Now we'll do a bit of blue. All right. There we go. A bit of blue. Isn't this wonderful? Look what I have here. Now, let's see. We took actually these liquids and mixed them together to create this amazing string slime. Reminding me of really just infant bacillus with... um much prettier color I'd say than the green uh, the greenish brown tones that you see but look at this so the minute that it hit the solution the calcium chloride in the water that's also known as the activator it froze it into the string shape that I was squeezing it out of the bottle isn't that wonderful how much fun all right, now we're going to do something. This is one that I'm going to go outside to do, but I want to burn a few things. You know I do like to burn things. I'm going to take some sugar along with some baking soda, and I'm going to add an accelerant to it. I'm going to stick with my methyl alcohol, and I'm going to burn it. A very interesting thing happens as that baking soda heats up. It actually gives off carbon dioxide and creates quite a wonderful reaction. It's known as the burning snake experiment. Let's give it a try.